Who knows what Jay-Z, J.K. Rowling, Bill Gates and Oprah Winfrey all have in common? Okay, I will tell you then. They have all overcome failure in one shape or form to go on to gain success in their respective careers. Welcome to My Perfect Failure. Join us as we delve into the world of our perfect failures. We will interview, explore, and discuss how our perfect failures can lead us to success. Join us and tune in. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of My Perfect Failure. As you can guess, today I'm super excited because I have an amazing guest for you. So my guest today is a visionary author coach entrepreneur dedicated to enhancing lives her best-selling book infinite love my journey to better health relationships and finances applying a scientific spiritual approach combines science and spirituality to guide global audiences towards holistic health relationships and finances founder of infinite love coaching academy and Infinite Love Holistic Resort. Her coaching harmonizes personal experiences with mind, body, spirit, unity. Her diverse, diverse even expertise encompass encompassing education, NLP, leadership, psychology, and quantum physics, empowers individuals to conquer obstacles and realize aspirations. Fluent in four languages, and a seasoned traveller, she brings a worldly outlook to her sought-after coaching and speaking engagements, overcoming personal trials, including her mother's illness, fueled her passion for well-being, leading to the Infinite Love Project. Through this initiative, she has helped countless people achieve physical and emotional healing. Rooted in compassion, she champions heart-centered principles emphasizing self and universal connection. She blends coaching, therapy, spiritual wisdom, guiding individuals worldwide to access inner potential and achieve profound success. So a an extremely warm welcome to my perfect failure, Shima Shad Ralph. How are you? Thank you so much. Hi Paul. Thank you so much for inviting me here and I'm uh Pleased to be with you today and with your beautiful audience, share my journey and the learnings. I'm excited to, to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Researching you, I was just, I just want to have this conversation now as I was <laughs> researching you because you've got an extraordinary journey, which we're going to get into. But what you do today, I, I'm fascinated with. You, you've just got these myriad of different tools and skills and expertises you have that you bring together to really help everybody your clients and any everybody that accesses your material your website and your social media handles to really engage and really lead and have access to a, a fulfilled life J just for people listening and watching so the title of this episode is synergy of success where well-being fulfillment and well aligned so i love that title because from a selfish perspective these are all things that i am keen to merge together um but to, to start with your journey or the start of your journey is pretty extraordinary in terms of where it all started for you so could we maybe capture a little bit of growing up in, in Iran and what that was like and then we can navigate to the wonderful stuff you're doing today. Sure, thank you so much Paul. Yeah, it is a long journey but if you want to make it short, I was uh, born in Tehran in the middle of the war between Iran and Iraq after the revolution. So the first six years of my childhood is growing up uh, during the bombard and uh, witnessing horror, conflict, attack and uh, um, war in the world. And after that, um, that inspired me actually to seek for the answer um, of who I am, 
and um, what is my role here in this world and what is my mission and why did I land here? And um, set me on a journey of self-discovery and self-development. And um, I moved to uh, Germany and I was studying uh, there because I wanted to learn more about Nietzsche and German philosophies, which is talking about and God is dead. And that was an inspiration for me and my journey in nihilism after growing up with uh, restricted Islamic teachings at the school uh, and uh, looking for the answer, uh, who is God who created us and why we are living in such a conflictful world. And I went deeply into the philosophy and science and for a while that made great sense. And that was the reason I moved to Germany and started to work there, started my business career when I was 19 years old very young age and began to travel 180 days a year, expanded in business internationally. And uh, when I was 23, I moved to Marbella. I came here for vacation in the southern Spain and I decided to be here as long as I'm young and I can still enjoy my life. So I started to live here and um, being becoming an entrepreneur since then. And then... Uh, Personal journey continued that inspired me to create and build uh, the coaching and holistic health center Infinite Lab. So, just going back to the the seeking and the curiosity you had as as a as a youngster, when mm -hmm. obviously there was a difficult time in Tehran with the war the war and, and everything, mm -hmm. was that typical of of people around you? Were you did you stand out? in terms of having your curiosity? Were, were, did your siblings, did friends around you, did they have the same type of curiosity that you had? I would say, no, it wasn't typical. It does, I think each of us come here with a specific mission and a journey. And um, that was um, very much individual and connected to me because many others they just accepted the teachings or they don't say anything and they continue and get along with it but for me that was um, a source of creating questions in my mind and in my heart i was always feeling uh, the existence of the bigger energy the angelic beings around me that were protecting me and guiding me and supporting me but that was not really aligned with Islamic teachings. The teachings were mainly um, uh, bringing fear into my heart of a God who is angry and who is uh, sending you to hell and it will burn you eternally if you show your hair or if you show different parts of your body. And that uh, was completely um, un understandable for me. When I was at kindergarten, I remember my uh, kindergarten teacher, she told us, if you put your hair out, uh, when you die, uh, there would be a bridge made from one simple hair, and you will be hanged from that bridge, from your hair, and under this bridge, there's the value of um, a lot of uh, dragons that they are blowing fire, and eternally, you will be burned into the fire. And I was only five years old, so I couldn't really understand this teaching. Yeah. When I went home, and I, the day after I told my mom to put me a very short top and a skirt that I had, and she was asking me, why do you want to wear this? And I just, I just want to wear this one today. And obviously, when you're at that age, you're not forced to cover your hair or anything. You, that become enforced when you're nine years old in Islamic countries. So I was only five and I wore that super open dress <laughs> and I went to, to the kindergarten and everybody there was sitting with a scarf and like all, all dressed up completely. And I was the only one coming and showing up that way. And the, the teacher got very angry at me and she told me, I have spent the whole day yesterday explaining about your destiny if you don't cover your hair and today you come half naked. What is this? <laughs> and I said, because I was thinking a lot about it last night. First of all, I have very sensitive hair. 
when my mom is making my hair, it hurts. So I was thinking if they hang me from my hair, it's going to be damn painful. But when my father is playing with me and he holds my hand and he turns me around and he's playing, I never have pain. So I thought I'm going to put my hands and legs out because if they're going to hang me, they better hang me from my hands or legs because that's not painful. <laughs> that was my answer. And she says, how do you know you're going to go to hell? And I thought, well, I didn't, I don't think that I'm going to go to, to the same heaven that you go because you're completely covered, fully covered. And I, I would never go to that heaven. And so that was an answer from a five years old mind. Five they asked years. my parents to come to school for the answer. And I was getting into trouble, but that was nobody's teaching. It was purely coming from me, my own analytical mind, answering this. Instead of being afraid, instead of being scared, just analyzing, is that really truth? So if that's the truth, if I come here, because then they want to burn me eternally. It's better that they hang me from my hands and legs instead of my head because that's going to be very painful. So <laughs> that become the foundation of me questioning everything. I was questioning everything. I would never accept or take things for granted. Yeah. And that when by then when I was 14 years old and we had a lot of um, Islamic teachings at the school, I convinced my teacher uh, to change his <laughs> uh, his mullah outfit and wear a suit because I asked him three questions and I said you have the entire semester to answer these questions if you can I will come here completely wearing a uh, chador and a, a scarf and everything and I would pray five times a day but if you are not Coming back with the answer, you need to take up that clothes, that outfit, and you come with suits, which is forbidden in Iran after the revolution to wear suit and all this stuff. And at the beginning, it was much more forbidden. Now it's a little bit more open. But before, mm -hmm. they would arrest you if you if you come to work with suits. You know, it's something that comes from another country. Yeah. So, and I asked these three simple questions. And uh, he didn't answer me. And I remember very well the day that I was at the exam, he came on top of my chair and he was with the brown suit. I never forget that day. So it was, I was always in these discussions of challenging, challenging the educational um, material that especially come to the ideology. So there were a lot of things that were not matching my ideology. I started to dive deeper. And the idea of Nietzsche, uh, the book, also Sprach Zaratustra, and so saved uh, Zoroaster. This book transformed my mind because he started the book with, and God is dead. And that made much more sense. For me, being in a country that I'm constantly under conflict and trying to survive made much more sense that there is no God then there is a God who is uh, whatever that they explain. Then I went uh, deep into the science and studied um, science and also theology for over 20 years. Parallel to my other uh, academic education and business, I was deeply into both of the fields and trying to combine them together and create and um, develop my own ideology and understanding about life. And um, I was 18 years old when I traveled to uh, Konya, a city in southern Turkey where Rumi, the Persian pro uh, prophet of unconditional love, his tomb is there. And uh, we went with my mom on a spontaneous trip. We did not have plan to end up there. And I shared the entire journey in the book. But we ended up there in this ceremony. Somehow, some magical energies were there that brought us to this trip and opened my eyes to the unseen. I have seen miracles in front of my eyes. I have seen so many um, deeper layers to life that I was ignoring till then because I was completely into one-dimensional scientific physical part of me. That's, and so that open, trip was inspiring. So did it open you up to different possibilities that you hadn't thought about previously? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
all this miraculous event and the way that everything happened, the synchronicities that happened, that we got on this trip and we get there and being in that room, uh, ceremony, it was all magical. It was all beyond, beyond explanations of science. And something really opened in my heart in that trip. I really felt something deeper within me. And that started uh, uh, my journey into connection with this infinite source of love that is inside our heart, inside each of us. And um, and later on, um, I have uh, become I've been uh, became familiar with the teachings of Heart Mass Institute. Um, that's a scientific institute that uh, studies the science behind the heart and uh, the power within each of us and the power that we have in our heart, but in the scientific labs, they are studying all this for the past uh, 30 years. And uh, I started to study at HeartMass Institute, became a heart uh, intelligence facilitator. And that gave me the answer the scientific answer to my to my questions and how everything we need is within us, is inside our DNA, is written inside our body. And the key access to that is through our heart, through our heart chakra. And that's how you unlock your true potentials and you access this invisible, uh, infinite realm of possibilities. Okay. That, that's fascinating. So... So what are the tools that we need to apply? Because I, I would imagine, I'm kind of guessing I, a, a little bit, that a lot of people that be listening to this, this will be really interesting. And they're thinking, how can I apply? Was it, is it heart-based? Did you say heart? Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, heart intelligence. How can you access your heart intelligence? It's very simple, actually. We have... Um, techniques that are developed by heart mass institutes and are actually scientifically approved techniques that can create coherent communication between your heart and your brain and by doing this simple technique immediately you can shift your level your state like your mood state your um uh, level of consciousness because you can access the higher intelligence so it has a lot of health benefits at the same time it's a primary step for for us to access this divine intelligence and ask for guidance is, uh, is, sorry please, no carry on please um you had a question yeah, I, yes, it was a curious question, really. And I, I, I'm taking your your tips on being curious. So is there any relationship with meditation? It is similar to meditation, but um, for meditation, you need much longer time okay. to get to that space. And in um, um, heart intelligence and creating heart coherence, it's it's only two simple steps. So basically... You need to bring your attention to the area of your heart in the center of your chest. You can do that by placing your hand over your chest area. You can also close your eyes and maybe you are able to hear your heartbeats if you close your eyes and pay attention to your heart. The first step is to just close your eyes and bring your attention to your heart and slow down your breathing rhythm. And the second step is to create an elevated emotion, an elevated emotion such as gratitude, such as compassion, such as care. So we can do it together if you want. We can do okay. now that uh, this topic comes up. We can just take a deep breath and close your eyes. And place your hand over your heart. Bring your attention to your heart center. And you can command your body to slow down your breathing rhythm. Simply say, slow down. Slow down. In this very moment, create a feeling of gratitude in your mind. 
Be grateful for your heart that is beating for you 24-7 without any risk, and without any expectation, giving you life. And I know this beautiful feeling of gratitude to expand in your chest. and travel to every corner of your body. With a beautiful smile on your face, and this deep gratitude in your heart, We can slowly open your eyes. So congratulations, you have created heart coherence. That was that was a couple of seconds below a minute. And you can do this at any given moment. So how do you feel? I feel positive. I feel that the word that something you said to apply when going through the process, I feel the gratitude of doing that. It makes me, I, I felt about, I thought about a lot of, a lot of life opportunities that I've had that mm -hmm. I will have in the future that sometimes we i just don't think about mm -hmm. so it's yeah so it's a and i what i love about it is the the simplicity of it mm -hmm. just taking a moment to go through that process and absolutely think about positive things or even some of the things i was thinking about in line with this podcast some of the challenges that i've had today mm -hmm. but i'm still here mm -hmm. i've got the experiences of navigating those challenges and being here talking to you in mm -hmm. 2023 that's that's a blessing that's amazing how you see how simple exercise can really shift our mindset and this is um not only shifting our mindset at the same time is producing a healing hormone to our bodies. Because when we are constantly in stress, we are constantly thinking about what we need to do in the future or regrets about the past. We are not fully living in this present moment. Our body is producing stress hormones such as cortisol and uh, adrenaline and put us on fight and flight. To be constantly on fight and flight, we are creating and developing disease in our bodies. Mm. The moment you take time to create this simple two-step heart coherence technique, to do create a coherent communication between your brain and your heart, this moment your body starts to release uh, horm uh, hormones and healing enzymes into your body. Mm. That's that's probably an epidemic in terms of people not applying this technique that you've mm -hmm. described, but also particularly in 2023, mm -hmm. that everybody rates at a thousand miles an hour. Everybody has stress or thinks about stress. Mm -hmm. at the, the moment that they wake up, stress isn't far away from, mm -hmm. not for everybody, but I certainly think for a, a, a majority, a portion of the majority of people. And so, so, to, so just to kind of like lean into that a little bit, I, I was reading part of your book where you talk about your I think business partner Salvador who mm -hmm. came to see you I, mm -hmm. I let you regale the, the story but I think that leads in nicely to what we've been just just been discussing mm -hmm. absolutely so this is um actually my journey and how I came across holistic health uh, it was um as I mentioned entrepreneur since young age 
And soon after I met, uh, I moved to Spain, I met Salvador, um, my business partner who became like a true father to me. And he helped me to expand my business here and expand it internationally. After a couple of years in 2013, he came once to the office and he said that doctors gave him only three months to live. Cancer developed all over his body and they couldn't give him any more uh, radiotherapy because he lost a kidney. And that's it. They just sent him home to die. And the heaviness of this news was so big on my heart that I couldn't accept that I'm losing him. So I started to start to study deeper about cancer, how our body functions, why do we create cancer in our bodies and how can we heal it now that the conventional methodology, conventional steps and treatments are not a case anymore. How can we have a holistic approach? And I read many books and watched a lot of interviews of people who healed their terminal disease, specifically cancer, uh, with natural treatments and holistic approach. Uh, the book of Louis Hay, You Can Heal Your Life, uh, transformed my mind about how our body functions. And she shares that there is an emotional cause to every disease. So there is an emotion that actually is uh, the root of every disease. And she shared the, the entire list. And uh, this is based on Chinese medicine. Over 5,000 years, they are teaching the emotional root of disease and they are only working on the emotional energetic body. In the conventional treatments, we ignore completely the energetic body, the mental body, the emotional body. We only focus on the physical body. And therefore, we have so many uncurable diseases. And so I came up with a protocol for Salvador based on uh, the book of Luisa and other interviews that I have watched. Uh, the main important treatment for cancer is to understand the root cause of cancer is holding resentment and grudge. And you do need to forgive. You do need to forgive others and yourself in order to heal. That's the first step. And then obviously you need to alkalinize your body because when you do cancer cell grow, grow in a body that is too acid and too acidic body is because of too much stress. Too much high level of um, cortisol, high level of adrenaline constantly in the body uh, make the pH of the body to go out of the balance. And then when the pH is out of balance, every type of disease can grow. We have scientific studies shows when they take the cancer cell and change the ambient and put it in an alkaline ambient, the cancer cell died by itself. So you do not need to do any radiotherapy and any other aggressive treatments or cut the, the, the tumor or anything else, but changing the ambient. But very important to understand that changing the ambient is doable only if you take control over your mind. Because no matter how much alkalinized water or, or food you are drinking and eating, if you do not attend the cow's root, which is your mental health, which is the stress, the body keeps going out of balance. So a lot of information that you hear out there about alkaline diet and alkaline water, it becomes only commercial if you don't take care of the thought. We are multidimensional beings. We have physical bodies, emotional bodies, mental body, and energetic or spiritual bodies. And in, in order to attend to health, we need to attend to all full dimensions of ourselves and we are. We have scientific studies showing, proving that over 90% of the disease are directly related to stress. Yet only 3%, only 3% of people receive stress management techniques. So with that, so for people listening mm -hmm. that can totally relate to what you've said, just in terms of the stress, they won't be, they won't have the... The, the knowledge based on how to how to remedy it but I, what i'm keen to do is to ask you for people listening that think actually i totally relate to that i really want to maybe start adopting practices that are going to alleviate the stress and actually avoid all these diseases that i'm i'm mm -hmm. vulnerable to mm -hmm. 
is the heart-based intelligent? Is that a technique they can use or would there be something else that you would recommend? Definitely creating the heart coherence is one of the simplest, easiest techniques that we have scientific studies about its health, health benefit. I published it in my book, over seven different health benefits. Plus, you're improving your problem-solving skills, you're improving your sleeping disorder, and a lot of other, other things parallel. That's one of the simplest techniques you can use. But definitely, we need to change and shift our paradigms, our daily habits. How do we start our day? And how do we go to bed, back to the subconscious mind? Okay, okay. It is very important uh, and plays a great role. If we spend every morning only five minutes to start our day with gratitude, create a list of uh, 10 or, or, or 15 things we are grateful for, that creates a beautiful impact on our day and everything that we're going to do and accomplish that day. And if we spend the last five minutes before we go to bed, focusing on gratitude, focusing on the beautiful manifestation of our desires, visualization of what we want to have, and we take that into our subconscious mind, then definitely we are creating a complete shift in our life. So um, the shift happens with very simple adjustment all what you need to do is five minutes per day five minutes and should you do that in the morning and when you go into bed the best is to do in the morning when you go to bed and whenever you have a stress but if you can't just do it one of them if you if you can only spend five minutes in the morning to start your day differently that's enough to create a huge transformation in your life that five minute in the morning if you can go to bed instead of watching the social media and all the horrible news out there that are fear-based news, instead of that, if you can focus the last five minutes on gratitude or on visualize, uh, visualization of your goals, then that definitely prompts you to success and well-being. So should we... So I'm just thinking people that would be listening to this and potentially watching who've got busy lives everyone's got busy lives this day regardless of whether you you're a parent or whether you work somewhere or whether you you manage i don't know a, a recreational club or it could be anything that stress sometimes can we know we might have something stressful coming up can mm -hmm. can we employ one of these techniques say if, if i know i don't know in an hour time i've got something stressful coming up could mm -hmm. maybe 50 minutes before i've got that meeting could i maybe mm -hmm employ one of these techniques to kind mm -hmm. of just give me that composure and that that clarity and that mm -hmm. poise before I have that meeting absolutely definitely the heart coherence technique would be one of the my most favorite one because you can do it in one minute you yeah. don't really need it it's really suits and fits the busy life uh, schedules that um, human today is experiencing and um, if you can also Focus on your breathing. Just make a simple breathing um, that you inhale for a count of four. You hold your breath for a count of four. And you exhale for a count of four. You hold again for a count of four. And you repeat that three times. This has uh, amazingly health benefit in reducing your stress, also improving your sleeping rhythm. It pr produces natural melatonin in your mind, and you can go to bed early without needing any stimulation to get you to to dream state. Well, I'm blown away by all the amazing techniques and tools that you have that you've researched over twenty odd <laughs> years that you have at your. It's almost like a toolbox of different tips that we can utilize based on whatever we've got coming up is it absolutely so all of them are shared in the book act basically after every chapter that i shared my journey and experiences what i have learned from them there are techniques that i'm teaching at my academy every day yeah. um that are simple to use and but the simplicity shouldn't be overlooked because by just creating that simple change you can create massive transformation in your life so, so with the book which i'm keen to cover now i, I read somewhere that this is kind of like the book you always wanted. You, I think you, I think you referenced that you wanted to find a book that could encompass lots of different facets, right? In order to kind of, 
invariably what we have to do we've got to right. go 20 30 books <laughs> wanted so i think you created what you needed right to a certain point so in infinite love can you tell tell us your, your motivation behind that right sure so um it's a good question Paul. thanks for asking that Actually, I always love to read and study and um, dive into different topics of life. And every topic that I, every challenges, let's say, that I have confronted in my life brought me a lot of knowledge of me diving very deep in that specific area. When we talk about health, that was the illness of Salvador was the um, actually uh, the starting point. And when I gave him this... Um, techniques and uh, actually the conclusion and the methodology of what I have learned from people who healed their cancer, he applied it and six months after he was cancer free and he was healthier than ever back to office. So I started to share this information with as many as possible in different incurable diseases. They come to me with like many year disease. I never heard about this disease, but they just search online. Instead of searching what is that disease, I search people who healed this disease. Okay, okay. And that's this, the just changing the search keyboard to change yeah. the result. Because when I search for many year disease, all the results on the front top 10 pages of Google was incurable. But when I search people who healed this disease, then I came up with a lot of uh, interviews of people who healed and they wrote and they shared their experiences. So when I um, uh, shared these experiences with others, um, I was also making a note of different protocols. They were around 35 people with incurable disease and all of them got all, all the standing results just by applying these simple methodologies that were, uh, were the result of my online research. And um, the reason that I wrote the book was that when back in 2016, in December, they got me the shocking news that my mom was in a coma. They discovered a tumor in her brain. And my family didn't want to make me worried. I'm living uh, far. And my mother was my best friend, my soulmate. We had an amazing relationship. And she was very young and very positive and optimistic. So I did never... Uh, came across with this thought that I'm going to lose her really soon. And um, when I got myself to her bed and I applied some quantum healing, that is also a methodology that I shared in my book that was part of my uh, learning in my journey. She came out of coma and I started to share with my family uh, the result of this outstanding experiences with incurable disease. And my mother's cancer were stage one. It was not even cancer. That was a tumor that they didn't know yet if it, it is a cancerous tumor. But everything went wrong in the, in the biopsy. And um, so my family showed a great resistance toward holistic approach. And um, they didn't allow me to to bring her here in Spain and, and start applying this methodology. And I confronted great resistance. And that uh, was actually the reason I started to share this knowledge with as many as possible. So on my uh, flight from back from Tehran, I wrote 72 pages of the wow. Infinite Love Holistic Health Resort uh, mm. business plan. And when I landed two days after I started uh, with the, the funding the academy here in Marbella, that's back, back in 2017 in February. And I changed my industry completely and focused myself fully on sharing this knowledge with others. And in every seminar that I was holding for free every month, sharing the knowledge about how to manage stress, how to how, what is the relationship between our mind and our body, and the health and vitality and how to come uh, like uh, avoid for instance burnout and all these things in our business as leaders as ceos as executives as entrepreneurs so by sharing this um information i started to help others and um unfortunately i haven't been able to help my own mother she passed away after a year and a half of aggressive treatments that been applied on her six brain surgery and two months of radiotherapy. But uh, this ignited the fire in me to create the Holistic Health Center, uh, the Infinite Love, where we are applying holistic uh, methodologies and modalities 
to attain health in, uh, to health in its fullest dimensions, mental, physical, emotional, and uh, energetic and spiritual bodies. And the reason I wrote the book was uh, that I always wanted to have and read one book that has and covers all this information because we are multidimensional beings. We are not singular physical beings. Yeah. And for me to read all this information, I needed to read over 100 books. Mm, yeah. So I have decided to write something that brings all that inside one book that is still practical, easy to apply, and meet people at their challenges where they are mm. because it comes out from my own personal journey. Every methodology that I learned for healing, it was first of all for healing myself or my loved ones. It was never meant to be offered there for that. Uh, I didn't have a, a business in mind when I went to study coaching or study psychology or study body code, emotion code, theta healing, all the methodologies of healing. I never thought about creating a business around it. I only did it because I wanted to he help myself and my loved ones. And at some point, all of this became like an umbrella, became like uh, uh, a gradient of different lights and became a toolbox that I could help many that come from the same experiences. Yeah, and it's a wonderful project to pull together because by infinite love, you it is heart-centered, isn't it? It is love-centered. You are... Absolutely. You are bringing together all these tools and modalities where people can fuse together to really help them not just enjoy life, but have a healthy life, which they, they have, con which they're in control of. And also they understand why they're applying these different techniques. Absolutely. Because, it, because it's science driven. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's it covers every aspect of our lives because human beings have um, three main issues. All of us, we are dealing with one, if not all of these issues, one or two or all of them. Health, relationship and finances. Yeah, okay. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that kind of pulled together the title of this particular episode. So for people, and I totally agree with what you've just said, so for people listening now that really know or, or can sense that either one or all three of those aren't in sync at the moment, obviously they can use the book as a tool to fuse those elements together. But maybe you can expand on that and give people mm -hmm. some sense of what they can maybe start to do to kind of pull those in alignment so they can really start to flourish. Absolutely. It's a very good question, Paul. Actually, I came across um, this uh, knowledge that all our main issues and all our main challenges come down to one simple problem. And if we can attend that one simple problem, then we can create a shift in all three areas of our life. And that one simple problem is lack of self-love lack of self-care, lack of self-understanding, and lack of self-awareness. Self-love is often misunderstood with narcissism or egoism. That is complete opposite. Self-love means having the interest of self and all in consideration. If you want to be a good mother, you need to look after yourself to be there mentally, emotionally, physically for you. When you are in the plane and there is an emergency, you need to put the mask first on your own face in order to be able to help people next to you. It's impossible if you don't put the oxygen mask and start to help others, right? So it's impossible to be any good to anyone if you are not good to yourself. It's impossible to give love in relationship if we don't know how to love ourselves. How can I give something that I don't have? All the relationships are based on neediness. If I go in a relationship with lack of self-love, 
And it comes the same into our business and finances. If my relationship with myself is not good, it's impossible I can have that relationship good with my business or with money or with my finances. Self-love means self-awareness, understanding who we are, what is our purpose here, why did we come here? It's a very important question that we need to ask ourselves. And the moment we discover our purpose, and we start to share it with others, we are eternally abundant and giving. If we only know what we do here and what is our purpose, and we start to share that light with others, we don't need to work. Okay. Okay. I love everything you've just said. But what I'm curious around is how do, again, for people listening that, really want to maybe apply a lot of what you've just said if not everything how do they probe and actually ask of that question am i have i am i living in alignment with my purpose um do i have self-love because sometimes we have that compound effect where we might have been doing something for 20 30 years five years mm-hmm. okay i guess it, everybody will have their own timeline in relation to that but is it is is sometimes is it just an inner knowing yes very good question this is something i have shared in the last uh, chapter of the book your inner child is your inner guru and connect to it with your mirror the mirror is the best tool ever is the is your best mentor ever because you shouldn't look outside for the answer all the answers are inside you and the moment you connect with those beautiful eyes in the mirror they have everything to offer you all the answers so very simple step to check the self-love that i applied in all my teachings in in all the sessions whether it's an executive session or a executive coaching session or it's just a simple life coaching session i always use the mirror because that's how i can understand where you are on your journey with self-love because that's a root, that's a cause root of our disease, of everything, of uh, imbalances that we have in our life. So do you have a mirror? Do you have a small mirror that you can bring it? Who me? Who me? Yes. Bear with me one moment. I just need it's to, I, I probably do see a mirror. Bear with bear me one moment. Sure. A small mirror. Small mirror. Yes. Okay. 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 I've got, so, I've got, I don't know if you can see this. You probably can't. <laughs> doesn't matter you can see it yes perfect so if you can have a look into the mirror okay you might not be able to see my face i would like to see your eyes like just your eyes i need to see so if you're looking like your profile looking into the mirror okay and i would love to invite the audience also to have a mirror because we're going to do this exercise together is very very powerful exercise just look into the mirror and i want you to for a moment to connect deeply into your eyes Without judgment, without any judgmental thoughts about your face, about anything, about your hair or whatever, where people will start to look in the mirror, they start to judge everything in their face. Just look into the eyes and connect deeply to those beautiful eyes. And take a deep breath. And say, Paul. And the audience, please say your name into the mirror loud and say, I love you. I love? I love you. I love you. I love you. Okay, take another deep breath. And just tell Paul, I want to love you. I want to love you. I'm decided to love you. I decided to love you. Very good. You can put down the mirror. I love that. I was having a conversation with myself. (laughs) So would you like to share your experience? Yeah, to to that point, it, it was, it was like having, it was almost like having a conversation with my twin brother Mm -hmm. where, or me, but Mm -hmm. where we were, able to just reflect Mm -hmm. because you don't Mm -hmm. don't often in the day take a moment to reflect you get up 
you go, you're gone, go to bed, get up. But it was an opportunity to kind of uh, and and to, and to to reflect, but also to be compassionate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the day doesn't really you can invariably I think we're compassionate to other people but not really mm -hmm. ourselves absolutely so when yeah. you tell to yourself I love you what mm. what did you feel what did it did it feel true did it feel true to you yeah yeah I, yeah because I do I do mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. I never really say it to myself but I do mm -hmm. love, love mm -hmm. myself but I never who really say that and what was the difference when you say i i want to love you when you say when i decided to love you when i said i want when i felt i want to, to love me it was more about that kind of like leaned into maybe more forgiveness around things mm -hmm. that may have not worked out previously or mm -hmm. maybe things that i judge myself for mm -hmm. on, a, on a daily basis because mm -hmm. that does happen Mm -hmm. And I feel that when we judge ourselves, we it's that negative energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you that you spoke about previously that mm -hmm. the stress, the negative energy comes into play. Mm -hmm. Saying that it almost it's kind of like giving myself some grace and saying, oh, come mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Do you bad. see this shift? So what is self-love when I talk to people about self-love? Everybody says, I love myself. I do love myself. I look after my body. I have healthy diet. I go to sport five times a week. Or I do yoga or I meditate every day. And this is... But the self-love is something that you can only improve. Mm. And it needs constant checking. It's not something... Is that is always there because in different moments, in different situations, you experience different level of self-love. For instance, if somebody does something bad to you and if you hold anger, anger is the price you are giving for somebody else's mistake. Is the poison you are drinking, hoping somebody else's get in. Salvador. Exactly. And that is lack of self-love. Okay. So we shouldn't be attached to the emotions. And that's the biggest learning in my life to not be attached. If people do bad to you, digest that emotion. If you need to express your anger, if you need to express that moment, but let it go and don't get attached to it. And that is a different level of self love. Or do self care check very often. Ask yourself every morning, how do I feel? Do I need to do this, what I'm doing now, for instance, where I'm like, for instance, somebody asks you to do something and many people, they, they have problems to set boundaries or to say no. Asking yourself in the mirror and the mirror has always the answer because when you look into the mirror, the mirror is your soul connecting to you through your eyes. But the very first step is to heal that connection and that relationship with the mirror and just to s summarize in relation to this so when we practice when we do th this mirror work and we give up and we focus on our self-love and our self-care in mm -hmm. a really meaningful way that as a consequence that's going to impact us from a well-being perspective because well-being I guess is mm -hmm. underpinned mm -hmm. by this self love and this self care mm -hmm. work, and will that give us the opportunity to become more fulfilled mm -hmm. and make ourselves more present to maybe focus on some of our some of the maybe career and entrepreneurial and mm -hmm. all these other elements that are and health mm -hmm. that are very important to us. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a root cause of every challenges that we have: the lack of self love. Because it's the lack of self-awareness. And the moment you connect with the mirror, you let go of self-criticize, of self-criticizing thoughts. You let go of self-blame. You let go of judgment, judging yourself and judge others. You dive into the forgiveness. You take the greatest step, first of all, to, to healing yourself, healing your life, healing your relationships, because the relationships are not anymore based on neediness, it's based on mutual understanding based on this unconditional love that first is given to yourself 
And at the same time, you can ask the soul. You can ask through the window of your eyes from your soul. Why am I here? Mm. What is my purpose here? And how can I live it? And then journal this. Or uh, one of the most powerful exercises that I give to my uh, clients is to record your voice when you're talking with the mirror on your mobile voice recorder. And have this self-talk at least five, 10 minutes per day and receive guidance. That's the best guru you can ever ask in life any question because nobody better than you knows your conditions and your situations and your body and everything else. So ask those eyes in the mirror. And when the eyes is telling you doing, th doing this, you need to step onto this path, do it. Because that will create abundance, that will create wealth, that will create sustainable wealth in your life. Interesting. So, so when you're doing the, the, the mirror work, can you just really be honest with yourself? And if there are things that don't stack up in your lives, mm -hmm. can you, you kind of know it, but you don't really question it because if you don't yes. have, it, have it and. Right. Absolutely. It. So that's so, the whole point. You need to be very honest. Okay. And it's impossible to not be honest with the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> they are always with you. Yeah. But but this is a wonderful technique to yes. really challenge ourselves. Absolutely. And actually... I had a client who was um suffering from uh, cheating uh, constantly his business partners and his ex-wife and his current girlfriend and he was not committed in relationships. And he is a very wealthy man and highly achieved entrepreneur. But um, when I was doing the Wheel of Life is a, is a coaching tool to see in each area of your life, how much score do you get? Basically, based on your own evaluation, how much do you give to your finances out of 10? How much do you give yeah. to your relationships? All his uh, all the areas, he was a 9 out of 10, but the relationship, he was on a 6 or 7. Yeah. So that gave me the clue that he's lacking of self-love. And when I told him about self-love, he says, no, 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 I'm going to retreat. I'm meditating. I'm going to this, this, this. Is... And I said, well, there is some problem. Let's have a look into the mirror. And he looked in the mirror. And when he said to himself, I love you, the mirror immediately tell you, don't lie to me. And he closed the mirror. He gave it back to me. He says, that was a tough experience. And he left. The day after he sent me an email, he says, last night I had vivid dreams that I think is related to the exercise we have done together because I haven't dreamed in the past 20 years or I don't remember my dream. And I asked about his dream. Basically, in the dream, it came the, his ex-wife, who he repeatedly cheated on. His best friend, which is his business partner, who he cheated on as well many times, and he betrayed in the business, and his current relationship. So I told him, we have to strengthen this com communicate connection with you and you need to forgive yourself for who you have been and everything that you have done if you want to heal your life, which yeah. was a very difficult topic for him to yeah. forgive himself because he says it's not okay or what I have done. But you need to understand that if you want to heal your life, you want to create a shift in your life, you need to start with self-forgiveness. After that... Uh, when he started to do the, the whole process of the self-love, is a 21-day exercise as we do with Mirona. Each one has different topics. Um, he asked his, um, he, he was uh, having a girl who coming for a visit, like just a random girl. And when he went to the bathroom, he confronted his eyes in the mirror. He came out and he sent the girl home. And the day after, he called his girlfriend and he asked her to move in. And this has been five years ago. They are living happily ever since together. And he finally could come into a relationship. And he could also fix his partnership with his best friend. Wow. Never, ever he committed to cheat. And there was no ideology teaching at our sessions. All what was present was the mirror and he's in his own eyes. Because by committing to your own self, 
There is no bigger power that's going to burn you in fire in another world or any philosophical uh, beliefs in some kind of morality that is based on unseen. It's here and now. It is real. It's your eyes. You can't hide from your eyes. And, and uh, once you go through the self-forgiveness process, you don't want to go there again. Mm -hmm. So you would avoid harming others. You would avoid hurting others and hurting yourself. And this is the best foundation of morality I have ever found. Yeah. Well, an amazing story. And just a, a point to the story. Prior to doing that exercise, had he had he acknowledged to himself before he started his exercise that he was cheating his cheating and he was doing these things. When he did the mirror, no, before he didn't say anything. He didn't share okay, any okay. of that. <laughs> okay, well. When he looked in the mirror and the dreams were the ones that were telling me what happened. And obviously we worked on his dream and he opened up. <laughs> okay. okay. I, it's uh, fascinating stuff. But we're getting towards the end now, but I've got a couple of, couple of questions. So on the mirror work, how often, for people that are thinking mirror work sounds amazing, should I do it daily, a couple of times a day, or you do it when you need it? Um, my suggestion is to make your mirror your best friend and as many questions as you have asked the mirror about any new business relationship you want to take, about any anything you want to learn. Even if you ask the mirror something that you really think you don't know, you will be amazed how a mirror come back with an answer to you. And record these conversations. When you listen to the conversation, you truly know that this message was sent from the divine is not you only involved because that information you couldn't find in your mind. It's coming from your heart. It's coming from your intuitive guidance. I've got to do best friend by mirror. Yes, you become your own best friend. Which and that's the key to uh, to happiness, to everything in life, to, to fulfillment. When we are our own best friend, we don't judge ourselves, we don't give ourselves a hard time, we are living in gratitude, then we are living in harmony and beauty and fulfillment and joy. Okay. So I've written down a question here that I wanted to ask you. Um, so, so some of your research, you found that people were living below 1% of their true potential as were programmed into survival. So could you maybe expand on that? Sure. Yes. Um, as I mentioned, we are multidimensional beings. We are not only a physical being. So as long as we don't know who we are, we only believe that we are this uh, body, we are this physics, we can't activate our true potentials. We need to understand who we truly are. And if you understand the terms of energy, vibration, and frequency, as Nikola Tesla said, then you can scratch the surface of the secrets of life. In order to understand that, you need to understand energy. If we look at um, our science, pure science, if we look today, all the information we have is based on 0.001% of the inside of an electron that we can study at our labs, which is the smallest part of the energy, the electron, right? 99.999% of the electron we can't study today with all our scientific devices at our labs. And we consider that empty. And all that what exists, 99.999% of the existence, we have no clue about it. So the reality is nothing more than an illusion of what we project out there and we think and we believe that is there. If we want to understand what is life, what are the secrets we need to understand the energy and learn the laws of energy. So very simple um, example is when you sleep. When you sleep, your brain doesn't differentiate the reality and a dream. If you have a bad dream, if you are being chased at your dream, or if you are uh, uh, like fighting with someone, you wake up 
feeling completely exhausted or even having pain in the same places in your body that you had fight with someone, right? Have you experienced ever that? Yeah. Why is that? Because your brain doesn't know what is reality and what is the dream. Because there is no reality. That's all the illusion is all the projection of the mind. The video projector is inside the pineal gland that is projecting the reality based on decoding information out there. So you are creating the reality at every given moment in your life. You are the creator, the artist, the writer, the, the player, the actor, and the director of your own movie. Okay. So it makes sense. So, so should we be focusing on if the energy doesn't feel good, then mm -hmm. we know that we're in the wrong frequency. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is how we manifest. So if we understand the laws of, of energy, then we can curate the realities that we want. Um, just think about the radio, uh, radio uh, apparatus. Mm. When you want to listen to different radio channels, you change the frequency and you tune into the frequency of that desired channel. You put your radio on FM 97, you listen to music channel, you change it to 102, you listen to a sport channel or to news channel and so on. In order to tune into the desired reality, all actually uh, versions of you are existing and living simultaneously in parallel universes that quantum mm -hmm. physics explains. Every potential is already there mm -hmm. how do we tune into different potential where focus goes energy flows if you put your focus on that if your focus is on lack what manifests in our life is empty bank account mm -hmm. if the focus is on not having enough not being enough not being good enough that's the result that is manifesting because we are tuning to the vibration of that version of ourselves so in order to create a different reality, to break free from this prison of mind, we need to open ourselves to this power, this tremendous power that we have within us. And that is right in the center of your heart. The heart chakra is your tuning device. Through the emotions, you can change your vibrational state. And by changing your vibration, you tune into different frequencies. So the tuning device is in the center of your chest. How do you do that? If you're feeling a low vibrational energy, a fear-based emotion, uh, anxiety, stress, lack, uh, anger, resentment, grudge, or anything similar. You know that what you are going to manifest in this frequency, it's all like what you don't want consciously, right? So how you are going to change it, you need to shift your vibration and raise your vibration on heart-based emotions, compassion, gratitude, self-love, self-care, everything else that uh, we actually, the simple exercise of creating heart coherence help you massively to shift your vibration because you're focusing on gratitude. And allow this focus to be as long as possible. Now, if you want to shift really your vibration, I would recommend you to stay there for at least 10 minutes, focusing on that heart-based emotions. And there you are creating other potentials and you are becoming a match to that vibrational reality that exists at the same time. So every version of me is already here. In polar universes around me. My happy version, my sad version, my failed version, my succeed version, my poor version, my um, uh, wealthy version, my healthy version, and my ill version, and all the other versions are there, like radio frequencies. Okay. I tune into different channels that are already there by raising my own vibration, by changing my own vibration. So so for people listening, again, I always use that as an, as an, as an analogy. If we're feeling lack or we're feeling fear, we change the frequency into something like 
gratitude mm-hmm. or I don't know or give in we mm-hmm. would change the frequency so as soon as we so is the is the key really the the, the awareness and the recognition so mm-hmm. when we're when because it's very easy in 2023 mm-hmm. for people to have to think about fear people think about fear of health people think about mm-hmm. fear of finance you think about it, fear of employment there's all these different mm-hmm. areas that we can we can focus on but when we latch on to that when we become aware that is our that is the moment we turn we look at our our radio and we're changing that frequency to something mm-hmm. that is going to be empowering mm-hmm. it's actually going to give us really thanks for everything that we have now mm-hmm. or, you know there could be other analogies absolutely so breaking free from the ego cap- encapsulated identity the identity that we have created for ourselves of who we are is the very first step to break free from fear because the all the fear is based on the uh I- identity that we are giving to ourselves yeah okay and recognition of that fear so there is a fear i'm i'm recognizing it and now the next step is I'm going to shift it. Mm. I'm going to shift it to a heart-based emotion. Um, there are uh, practical uh, steps in the book that I explain in chapter three about who we are, how to change your frequency and how to manifest your desired outcome and match the vibration of what you want. But the most important tip anybody can get from this conversation is to recognize how powerful you are and to let go of all the limitations being set on you by the society, by your educational system, by your belief and religious system, and by anybody else. You are much more powerful than you can ever, ever, ever imagine. Just for a moment, connect to the mirror and connect to that power within. And allow the mirror to be your guide, to be your mentor. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody out there. Just listen to yourself. You yourself know all the answers. Shima, I I love this conversation. I don't want. I can literally talk to you all day. Easy, easily. <laughs> easily. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm um, enjoying talking to you as well. Yeah, no, it's been it's been wonderful. What, what I wanted to ask you, so. The, the book I recommend clearly that everybody gets the, the book. Hopefully people are ordering it now as, as we've been speaking because it it really is groundbreaking and I love the the, 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 the self-empowerment that it's going to, not just in every aspect of life that the book does and, and will provide people. So obviously I can put a link on the show notes, but where's the best place for people to access the book? Right now is available globally on Amazon. So they just need to search Infinite Love Book by Shima Shatru. But, um, so they can find it on Amazon. And it's also on my website, the link to different Amazon markets. Like if they are in UK or in, if they are in Europe and maybe US, there are different markets. Uh, on my website, shimashatru.com. They can okay. also um, get it from there. Okay, lovely. And they're the best. So, and the best way to contact you, if people want to work with you, that would be your website, would it? Yes, definitely. They can uh, reach out to me through my website, shimashadru.com or LinkedIn, the same shimashadru or Instagram, also shimashadru. My YouTube channel is, uh, channel is also at shimashadru. Yeah, I have a lot of meditations there and visualization exercises on YouTube channel. Okay, lovely. Lovely. And so I think that the final question is, this is the recurring question. So if you could invite three inspirational people for dinner, they can be alive or past. Who would you invite? <laughs> I would invite um, three that are not here because hopefully the ones who are still alive, I would get them on dinner one day yeah. soon. So the one who are not here uh, that impacted my life um, profoundly are Rumi, as I mentioned, and I wrote about his teachings yeah. in the book a lot. And um, Louis Hay and Dr. Wayne Dyer. These three were definitely uh, playing a big transformational role in my life. And by writing the book, they were always present in my channeling sessions. Amazing. Was that Dr. Wayne Dyer, did you say? Yes. Okay, yes. okay, cool. cool. Okay, that would be 
a, an amazing dinner, cl clearly. <laughs> Definitely, it would be so inspiring. <laughs> Shema, I really enjoyed this. I, I knew that I was Thank going you. to enjoy it, actually, and I was, I had that, I said kind of at the outset that what you do is amazing. So researching you, I had all these questions because you combine all these different techniques and modalities together to give us all the opportunity to have access to our own abundance and i was i was super keen to to connect the dots so uh, so thank you for an amazing and enlightening discussion thank you so much Paul, for this opportunity and for your precious time that you're sharing with all of us and trying to motivate others and bringing the beautiful light of your heart uh, for everybody out there so thank you thank you oh, thank you thank you and, and i hopefully we can do this again absolutely it would be my honor thank you, and, and mine also so thank you so much and thank you all for tuning into this episode of my perfect failure we're always looking to grow the show so please do share this episode far and wide particularly if you know people that are looking to engage their own self-care and their own self-transformation this will be a perfect episode to share with them and you can also recommend or even gift infinite love and your feedback is most welcome we're keen to hear about the things you like and equally the things you don't like so please send your feedback to paul at myperfectradio.com or via the contact page on the website so until the next time take care for now bye Thanks for listening to My Perfect Failure podcast. Be sure to visit www.myperfectfailure.com to join the conversation. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Look out for our next episode.